Scientific Data Systems SDS, was an American computer company founded in September 1961 by Max Palevsky and Robert Beck, veterans of Packard Bell and Bendix, along with 11 other computer scientists. SDS was an early adopter of integrated circuits in computer design and the first to employ silicon transistors. The company concentrated on larger scientific workload-focused machines and sold many machines to NASA during the space race. Most machines were both fast and relatively low priced. The company was sold to Xerox in 1969, but dwindling sales due to the oil crisis of 1973-74 caused Xerox to close the division in 1975 at a loss of hundreds of millions of dollars. During the Xerox years the company was officially Xerox Data Systems XDS, whose machines were the Xerox 530, 550, 560, the Xerox 500 series. History Throughout the majority of the 1960s the U.S. computer market was dominated by Snow White, IBM, and the Seven Dwarves, NCR, Burroughs, Control Data Corporation, General Electric, Honeywell, RCA and UNIVAC. SDS entered this well-developed market and soon carved out their own niche, a surprising development. Much of this success was due to the use of silicon based transistors in their earliest designs, the 24 bit SDS 910 and SDS 920, which included a hardware integer multiplier. These are arguably the first commercial systems based on silicon, which offered much better performance for no real additional cost. Additionally, the SDS machines shipped with a selection of software, notably a Fortran compiler, developed by Digitech, that made use of the system's programmed operators, POPs, and could compile, in 4K 24 bit words, programs in a single pass without the need for magnetic tape secondary storage. For scientific users writing small programs, this was a real boon and dramatically improved development turnaround time. The 910 and 920 were joined by the SDS 9300, announced in June 1963. Among other changes, the 9300 included a floating point processor for higher performance. The performance increase was dramatic. The 910 920 needed 16 microseconds to add two 24 bit integers, the 9300 only 1.75, almost 10 times as fast. The 9300 also increased maximum memory from 16 QWERTS to 32 QWERTS. Although its instruction format resembled that of the earlier machines, it was not compatible with them. In December 1963 SDS announced the SDS 930, a major rebuild of the 9XX line using integrated circuits in the central processor. It was comparable to the 9300 in basic operations, but was generally slower overall due to the lack of the 9300's memory interlace capability and hardware floating point unit although a hardware floating point correlation and filtering unit was available as an expensive option. The 930 cost less than half that of the original 9300, at about $105,000 equivalent to $859,000 in 2018. Cut-down versions of the 920 also followed, including the 12-bit SDS-92, and the IC-based 925. Project Genie developed a segmentation and relocation system for time-sharing use on the 930 at the University of California, Berkeley, which was commercialized in the SDS-940. It had additional hardware for relocation and swapping of memory sections, and interruptible instructions. The 940 would go on to be a major part of Tim's Hare's circuit-switched network system growth in the 1960s pre-ARPANET and before packet switching. A 945 was announced in July 1968 as a modified 940 with less I.O. and the same compute power, but it is unclear whether this shipped. In December 1966 SDS shipped the entirely new Sigma series, starting with the 16-bit Sigma 2 and the 32-bit Sigma 7, both using common hardware internally. The success of the IBM System 360 and the rise of the 7-bit ASCII character standard was pushing all vendors to the 8-bit standard from their earlier 6-bit ones. 
SDS was one of the first companies to offer a machine intended as an alternative to the IBM system, 360. Although not compatible with the 360, it used similar data formats, the EBCDIC character code, and in other ways, such as its use of multiple registers rather than an accumulator, it was designed to have specifications that were comparable to those of the 360. Various versions of the Sigma 7 followed, including the cut down Sigma 5 and redesigned Sigma 6. The Xerox Sigma 9 was a major redesign with instruction look ahead and other advanced features, while the Sigma 8 and Sigma 9 Mod 3 were low end machines offered as a migration path for the Sigma 5. Meanwhile, the French national champion CII, as a licensee of SDS, sold about 60 Sigma 7 machines in Europe, and developed an upgrade with virtual memory and B processor capability, the Iris 80. CII also manufactured and sold some 160 Sigma 2 systems. The Sigma range was very successful in the niche real-time processing field, due to the sophisticated hardware interrupt structure and independent I.O. processor. The first node of ARPANET was established by Leonard Kleinrock at UCLA with an SDS Sigma 7 system. Even with these successes, when Xerox bought the company in 1969 they sold only about 1% of the computers in the U.S., something Xerox never seemed to improve. When they were purchased, about 1,000 SDS machines of all types were in the market, and by the time the division closed in 1975 this had increased to only about 2,100. By this point, the newer Xerox 550 and 560 models, extensively redesigned Sigmas, were about to come to market and were extensively backordered. Most rights were sold to Honeywell in July 1975 who produced Sigmas for a short period, and provided support into the 1980s. Several manufacturers attempted to enter the Sigma 9 replacement market. The first successful design was the Telefile T85, but it is not clear how many were sold. Other efforts, including the Modutus Model 9, Eileen Model 9000 and Realtime RCE 9 were designed, but it is not clear if they were ever produced past the prototype stage. Topic: A new start. In 1979, Jack Mitchell, William L. Shedding, and Henry Harold, former SDS engineers, along with some other ex-SDS people, restarted the company with funding from Max Palevsky, Sanford Kaplan, Dan McGurk, and others. They introduced a microprocessor-based computer called the SDS 420 built on a 6502A-based processor design with up to 56 kilobytes of memory and a proprietary OS, SDS-DOS, along with the basic programming language from Microsoft. The SDS 420 featured a dual single-sided double density 400 kilobytes per side floppy disk drive, Model 70, manufactured by Pershing Peripheral Sciences, of Santa Monica and Marina del Rey, California. The SDS 422 model offered some of the first dual double-sided double-density floppy drives. Other hardware options were a 6551A USART and a proprietary network SDS net using a Z8530 SDLC, HDLC chip and software patterned after the early Xerox 3.0 megabits per second Ethernet and transceivers produced by TATLAM of the Bay Area. The 400 series had little to do with scientific computing and more with word processing and business services. The company sold about 1,000 machines worldwide, including Tahiti, London, Italy, New York City and Los Angeles. SDS announced at COMDEX, in the early 1980s, its SDS Net, a fully operational local area network LAN based file server model 430 written by Sam Keys, of Westchester, California. The SDS 430 server offered file and print sharing services over SDS net or modems and was based upon a 10 MB hard disk manufactured by Micropolis of Chatsworth, California. SDS offered other models, including the SDS 410, a diskless workstation that booted and ran off the SDS net or optionally could boot off of and run over a 1200-bit, S modem link. Products offered were, Word, Word Processing, written by John McCulley, formerly of Jacquard Systems, Manhattan Beach, California, and fully functional accounting software, balance forward and open item accounting with general ledger, accounts receivable, accounts payable, and payroll, written by Tom Davies and Sandra Mass, both formerly with Jacquard Systems. 
Other offerings included, legal time and billing, medical time and billing, and TTY and early terminal emulation program using the 6551 USART, through partnerships with their value-added resellers Other software product offerings included a solid waste management system with automated truck routing and a country club accounting package. One UK-based VAR was JACQ Wright, a vertical market software house run by Ken Groom and Vivian Gurney and based in Dorking, Surrey. JACQ Wright had developed a range of specialist insurance software for the Jacquard machine but transferred to the SDS 400 following the advice of John McCulley. JACQ Wright installed several SDS 400 series networks in Lloyd's Managing and Members Agencies during 1982 and 1983. One of JACQ Wright's programming staff that worked on the software porting was Justin Hill. JACQ Wright's hardware sales were managed by David Ensor. Topic: SDS in the United Kingdom. In 1983, Ensor and Hill left JACQ Wright and formed a company calling itself Scientific Data Systems UK Limited or SDS UK, but actually unrelated to SDS in Crawley, West Sussex in the UK. This coincided with SDS's announcement of their 4000 series computer. They hoped to build a business around this machine, including supplying it to JACQ Wright and negotiated an exclusive arrangement with SDS. The SDS 4000 was a complete redesign, both cosmetically and with all new internal hardware, but the architecture was basically the same as the 400 series, and ran the same software. The machine had a one-half height 5.25 inch hard disk drive bay and used Seagate 10 and 20 MB hard drives or Sequest removable drive units. The 4000 motherboard had a SCSI interface still known as SASE at the time and an Adaptec 4000 SASE controller board was shoehorned into the case to connect the drives. The diskette drive was also half height 5 and a quarter inch the 400 series had used 8 inch diskettes like the 410 there was a diskless version too. Local area networking capabilities were carried over from the 400 series. The 4000's major aesthetic departure from its predecessor was the use of a separate 12-inch tilt and swivel visual display unit VDU and CPU case. The keyboard was detachable for the first time and the system had a beige color scheme dictated by the color of the third-party VDUs in place of the black and white appearance of the 400. However, financial problems at SDS were already substantial and the UK business only ever received a small number of hastily completed machines. In an attempt to bypass these problems Hill produced a clone of the 4000 series computer by reverse engineering an original model with the aid of a set of paper schematics obtained on a visit to SDS. This was neither approved nor supported by SDS, but Mitchell alone and not shedding made a confidential visit to the UK to help debug the new computer. This was fortunate because, being unable to confer with SDS, Hill had unwittingly used schematics referring to a forthcoming revision of the machine, for which no firmware had yet been completed. Mitchell alone and not shedding finished the new firmware at SDS UK's offices. This meant that Hill's unofficial 4000 was actually a later revision than any US machines completed. Hill also improved the board layout, rear panel connectivity and power supply. The new machine worked, and a number of examples were made using a prototyping firm in Poole, Dorset. Several were even sold, including a five-station network with external storage see below, to the UK Institute of Legal Executives ILEX, in Bedford which remained in use for several years. This was supplied with bespoke software also produced by Hill, with the assistance of Paula Flint to store examination results and print certificates. However, any hope of selling into the lucrative Lloyd's insurance market in conjunction with JACQ Wright was short-lived as JACQ Wright had abandoned SDS and moved to the IBM PC platform, taking their customers with them, as soon as SDS UK was formed. This decision was also influenced by John McCulley, who was now developing his word processing software for MS-DOS. The unofficial 4000 series machine was at least a finished computer, and the small number produced worked reliably. Taking advantage of the SCSI implementation, Hill added an external connector to his version of the machine and developed a matching hard drive enclosure. This enclosure accommodated higher capacity, full-height 5.25-inch drives.
However, the UK company's lack of capital to invest in the machine's manufacture meant that the cosmetic appearance of the computer left a lot to be desired. Furthermore, the machines were extremely costly. IBM's new personal computer, at was shipping at about half the price SDS UK Limited needed to sell their computer for. Relationships between SDS and its UK namesake had broken down completely by this time, and SDS UK did not have the resources to develop new versions of the hardware or operating system. SDS went out of business in the US 1984. The UK company of the same name ceased trading in the same year. Topic. Known users Although initially intended as a scientific computer system, the 900 series and the Sigma series were used extensively in commercial time-sharing systems. The biggest such user was ComShare Inc. of Ann Arbor, Michigan, who extensively developed the hardware during the 1980s and the Sigma 9 was operated commercially until c. 1993. Developments and improvements by Comshare included the iChannel, which allowed the utilization of bus, tag, IBM compatible, devices and the ISI communications interface. These innovations allowed Comshare to capitalize on the Sigma CPUs and their software development Commander 2 by gaining access to current technology storage systems. Recognition Equipment Inc. of Dallas, Texas used 910s in the 1960s to control its optical character recognition machines. Other known users in the USA include Known users outside the US Include Topic SDS software The primary operating system for the 900 series was called Monic for the Sigma 32-bit range RBM a real-time and batch monitor and BTM a batch and time-sharing monitor were available in 1971 a more sophisticated timesharing system UTS was released, which was developed into CPV. The RBM operating system was replaced by CPR, a real-time and timesharing system. In March 1982 Honeywell gave the remaining software for the 900 series to a group in Kansas City that offered to continue making copies for people still using the systems. Honeywell had stopped supporting the systems many years before this. In September 2006, this collection was donated to the Computer History Museum along with all of the program's original documentation, and copies of most of the SDS users' manuals. This is one of the largest collections of software to have survived from the 1960s intact. Unfortunately, the timesharing software for the 940 series was not present in the Honeywell Lads library and does not appear to have survived. Copies of the original system developed at UC Berkeley exist as file system backups. Most of the customers for 940 systems, in particular Timshare, made extensive modifications to the 940 system software, and no copies of that version of the software are known to have survived. A simulator for the Sigma series is known to exist, and Sigma series software is being collected by the Computer History Museum. Early versions were not copyrighted CPVCOO and earlier, while later versions developed by Honeywell were CPVEOO and FOO. Some copies of CPVDOO were released without licensing agreements and subsequently public domain status was claimed by users. <laughs> <laughs> Computer models SDS 910 first design, shipped along with the 920 in August 1962. 24-bit systems SDS 920 SDS 9300 High Performance 920 with FPU and more memory SDS 925 Less expensive but faster 920 SDS 930 Major redesign SDS 940 to 930 with additional support for time sharing. SDS 92 to 12 bit low end machine 1965. The first commercial computer using monolithic integrated circuits. SDS Sigma 2, Sigma 2 and 3 were 16 bit systems. SDS Sigma 3, SDS Sigma 5, Sigma 5 to 9 were 32 bit systems. SDS Sigma 6 7ths Xerox Sigma 8 9ths 
Topic. See also. Berkeley Timesharing System. SDS 9XX computers.